<laughs> What's good, Angelites? It's your boy Angelo's world. Welcome or welcome back to our world. Y'all see that thumbnail? Y'all see that title? Part two of Elvis Presley in the back in the black community by Sean and Mel. I appreciate y'all for uploading this. Smash that like button. Let's run the likes up and let's get straight to it, man. Welcome back, you guys, to the s and Squad. It's your boy, Sean. And your girl, Mel. Your favorite couple, y'all. Yes, we are. Definitely make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified. And guys, don't forget to join the s and Squad. Yes, sir. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> The first time I met Elvis, I was uh, in, in Las Vegas in the 70s. I was the conductor and music director the for B.B. King, Wait, the blues act. The first time you met Elvis was when you were in Las Vegas in the 70s. When in the 70s? Rest in peace, Elvis, but he passed away 77. So when in the 70s? Uh, we were opening in the Las Vegas Hilton's main room as the hey, opening Mama. act for him. Well, we had no idea Elvis was there, nor did she. So we were watching her act from backstage. And uh, in her act, she uh, walked around the main room in the audience, and she always stopped at this certain table. That well, morning, that when I walked into the dining room, I spoke. I said, good morning. He said, good morning. I said, what are we going to have for breakfast this morning? He said, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. And I said, Looked at him. I said, "What?" Fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. Have y'all ever tried that? Let me know. Because <laughs> what the fuck? He said, "Fried peanut butter and banana sandwich." I said, "I never heard of it." Hey there. Are you Ooh. looking to grow closer to God or dive deeper into prayer? I heard of it. The first time I went in, fixed the sandwich and put it on the tray and brought it back, that wasn't right. His father was sitting there and he said, Mary, I'm going with you and help you. And let's see, maybe both of us can get it right. I said, okay. And uh, he said, let's toast the bread first. So we toast the bread and then spread the peanut butter on it and slice the bananas and put on it and uh, put them into the skillet and kept turning them with the spatula and what? turn them till they got heated all the way through. Oh my then God, I take them and one day. cut them, the put them on the platter and take them back to me. And he said, that's what I want, that's right. And then smile. Life, but he'll always live because of the fact he was such a beautiful man. I don't care what nobody say, I know Elvis. You know, there are a lot of rumors Elvis and I sang spiritual together. And, uh, he kept me from being number one. I was number one soul and he was number one world. And it took a long time, but it's almost like the two runner cars. It made me try harder. And I love Elvis for it. And, and we'll always pray for Elvis. Do you remember that? Do you remember? It wasn't actually, you don't really meet Elvis. Uh -huh. You actually just look at Elvis. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's My mother sang with Elvis for years. Yeah. Uh, she and her, her group, they were called the Sweet Inspirations. Yeah. They also sang for Aretha for yeah. many, many years. On most of the, uh, in the 60s, uh -huh. they were on all of Aretha's songs. Well, um, Elvis took a liking to them. Mm -hmm. And my mom sang with him for many years. And they were very close. Yeah. Um, I just remember at one point being in a room, and we were all in this room, my mother and the singers, and we, they, you know, the, you know, the usually backstage kind of thing, and he just walks in the room with his mink on, with his glasses on, <laughs> oh my God. and he just walks in, he says something, and everybody just, you don't say anything, you just look. <laughs> it was just one of those moments I won't forget as a kid. Oh my it wasn't God. like, hi, Mr. Elvis, nice to meet you. You didn't do that. You just sat back and just, just looked at him. Amazing. Amazing, amazing to look at. Yeah. Just amazing. Wow. And just to be in his presence you know, was awesome. Tell me about that. Tell me, <laughs> well, when they first called, the girl said, oh, it's pretty. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? I said, hey, it's a gig and it's a good one. Uh-huh. <laughs> so um, we went. And when we got 
got there, it was nothing like what we might have thought, you know, because it was just wonderful. Oh. It was really wonderful. He was into gospel. So every once in a while when we finished rehearsing with him, we just sing gospel, all of us, you know. And we just had a good time. He would get good money and good pay and good, it was nice atmosphere. You know, and we didn't go around with him as his friends. We worked for him. So we saw him at work or at rehearsals. So I don't know what he did in between, nor did I care. You know, mm -hmm. I just doing what I was supposed to do, and we were. See, bro, hold on. Oh, I don't know what, what he did in between, say? nor did I care. You know, so I, mm -hmm. I just doing what I was supposed to do, and we were. With Sissy Houston, Las Vegas, 1969. Uh. Yep. Was one of Elvis's backing singers from July to uh, for only a month. What the? F what happened? Why is it lagging? The sweet inspirations. We've talked on television and um, had interview situations. I've never asked you about Elvis. What you want to know? <laughs> When did that all start? When did the whole <laughs> love for Elvis begin? He teases me about Elvis all the time. <laughs> but never says, on the air. Never. No, when he says, like, <laughs> if Elvis was alive now, oh, he says, man, you wouldn't even hang out with Elvis. <laughs> I said, yes, I wish it, man. Elvis would be in the lobby of your house, like, so you man, was there? <laughs> <laughs> and I would be in the room, get the fuck out of here. Hey, what's going on, man? He told me to come over. <laughs> oh, I know what's going on. All right. But I, when I was a kid, see, Elvis Presley to me, I just, it's, it's his presence, I think it is. I don't think anyone in this business has had as much presence as Elvis. I don't think anyone's had as strong a presence. I think, I think, I think there have been entertain I think Michael Jackson is the only entertainer who's ever been more famous than him. But I think Elvis has, uh, more press like when Elvis walked in the room everybody just looked at Elvis you know when he's on the screen you looked at Elvis he just had this thing about him and he was going through all this stuff with drugs and all this craziness but on screen and on stage he always looked like he was in control you know and that's amazing because it was this wall going on inside this guy and I'm just fascinated you know um because um the black community obviously felt that we shouldn't be doing it so Ebony Magazine in fact called us and uh, wanted to know we got a lot. Why are you singing with Elvis Presley? You know, why not? <laughs> and, and sometimes we get um, shot back with, well, you know what he said about black people. Uh, yeah, I heard that story, too. Um, but I also heard what he said about Mexican people. It's the same story. <laughs> what he what said about... about uh, the story is, Elvis Presley said... All a black person, I'm using that, can do for me is shine my shoes. Mexicans have the story. Mm. All a Mexican. All a black person can do for me is shine my shoes. Okay, so this is what my friend was talking about. Okay. That's crazy. do for me to sign my shoes. That's also attributed to Elvis. <laughs> yeah, that's a story, that's a rumor made up by some rock and roll singer who wanted to be where Elvis was, I suppose. Oh, so Elvis, because so it's as far not as I'm true, concerned, let me know. Elvis treated us royally. And if he said it, I don't care, because there's the things that I've said I don't want anybody repeating. <laughs> I'm going to be Elvis impersonator. <laughs> Obviously, you see the irony here. You've got a black man imitating a white man who sounded like a black man. I respect Elvis for what he did for music. You know, he opened a lot of doors for 
a lot of folks back there during a the time when they wouldn't even, quote unquote, play the music on radio. So uh, this is a tribute to Elvis. <laughs> At first, yes. Yeah, I mean, they said he was playing did. black music. He's a white guy. Yeah, but see, at first music. he was playing more like rockabilly. He wasn't yeah. really getting into the things that he started to do later. But when he started to do that, then he started to turn heads, including mine. Yeah, did. So yes. what, what did you see then? I saw that, that he was. He had everything. The looks, he had the the talent, he had the he had rhythm, had the rhythm, he had the soul, every, had everything. To me, he had everything. You know, you started looking at the guys, God almighty, he's handsome, he's tall, and he looks good, he can sing, he can play. He got a, you know, a lot of women. He, well, I, I didn't see, uh, you know, I didn't see women disliking him, but he, he was just, I didn't, and I didn't see him after them yeah. either. But uh, I guess had I been handsome like that, I probably would have. <laughs> Are you addicted to swiping? Oh, yeah, but there's it, another thing that I'm going to for you guys. It's, I forgot what movie that was, but I seen it. A movie scene he was in. I'm going to react to that for you guys, too. Boyfriend dating? That was me, too, before I found my... Black cats. Keep away from me. Take my advice. Go shinny up a tree. I've got... A... Hard luck, the hardest kind of luck you'll find. I ain't lying. I got the bluest kind of blue. In the 60s and early 70s, when tensions between blacks and whites were at an all time high, Elvis demonstrated his desire for racial reconciliation in the musicians that he chose and the treatment they received. He uh, believed that he had a certain connection with God, not so much more than anybody else did. But in his search, he was trying to get close to God. So he felt that by helping others, maybe that was his mission. I'd hang around parts of Tupelo my folks never even knew about. If Mama had known where I was half the time, I would have caught hell for it. This friend of mine used to take me across town to an area called Shake Rag. And that was when I first heard the blues. Sure this is the house that Elvis bought for me. He bought it in 1974. And he came and picked the house out for me. And I liked it, and he liked it. So he said, well, Mary, this is your house, if you like it. I told him I loved it. It was really nice. There must be lights burning brighter somewhere. Got to be birds flying higher in a sky more blue. If I can dream of a better land where all my brothers walk hand in hand, tell me why. Well, you guys, that was the end of Elvis in the Black Community, part two. Um, hey, man, <laughs> from what it sounds like, from what it looks like, he was all about equality, and that's what we're still looking forward to this day, man. And it's it's kind of sort of. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Comment down below what the Elvis uh, reactions you guys would like. Elvis videos you guys would like me to react to. Songs, whatever the case may be. And I got you guys. Um, I'm going to react to an interview with one of his friends or somebody. You guys are going to see that on Friday. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And make sure you guys go check out my reaction to part one of the Elvis in the Black Community. That video will be over here. So go check that out.
And if you do not want to miss any other of the Elvis reactions that I have on the way for you guys, smash that subscribe button and turn on that post notification bell so you'll be notified when my next Elvis reaction goes live. And I'll see you guys on Friday. I'm out.